Hi friends, hello. Welcome to today's live stream that's all about creating patterned paper for your paper crafting projects and your card making projects with stamps and inks. So I'm just popping in here before we start our tutorial to share a few announcements today. First of all, I'm so grateful you joined me for the live stream today. If you're catching this on the replay, please don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comments. I, I will most definitely come back in and answer any questions that you may have. And I'm just excited to be here with you today. It is a beautiful day here in Maryland. Finally, a little bit more on the warmer side and I'm really enjoying the sun. And I hope wherever you are today that you are well and you're taking good care of yourself. So, okay, so a couple things that I wanted to share, announcements before we get into the live stream tutorial is that uh, the freebie that I have been sharing in many of the live streams, uh, the Bloom with Joy freebie is, I'm looking to see if I had it around with me, is going to expire and there will be a brand new freebie for June. So if you haven't joined my email list, you can head on over to my website at indigojadeart.com and click on the subscribe button and you can subscribe there. There's also a link down in the comments where you can click on and a subscribe as well. I would love it if you would join my community. I do send an email out every week, once a week usually, and I share a, a lot of tutorials, free content, uh, email subscriber specials that I only share with my email subscribers. So super excited. And I also share upcoming events and new classes that are going live, which brings me to, I have a brand new class going live next week in my craftyourjoy.com classroom. It is whimsical and wonky flutters. And I am teaching, oh, here's some of the flutters. I just wanna share those with you. Just love them. And I am teaching six, what I call scatter your joy watercolor techniques in this class. It is a really, really fun class. I'm gonna teach you how to draw this wonky flutter. You don't need any drawing experience, but you're gonna have a lot of fun with me taking a deeper dive into techniques. If you've enjoyed the live streams and the way I teach in depth and take deeper dives into techniques, you would love my online classes. Okay, so that's coming next week. And I just, before we get started with our tutorial today, I just wanted to share that um, I believe that when you create something with your hands, it is the ultimate thing that you can do for your self-care. And I would encourage you to craft your joy and hope that you will get out all of your supplies and have some fun with them this weekend. So let's go ahead and head on down to the project cam and start today's tutorial. Okay, let's see. It looks like we're good to go here. All right. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. And if you're coming in and watching on the replay, today's tutorial is all about creating pattern paper with stamps and inks. So I'm going to be sharing a couple different. Um, samples and we're going to be sharing a couple different techniques that I use to create pattern paper. So I design pattern papers, I design patterns for a lot of different products and I just take this concept of creating patterns that I would for products and turn it into how I would do it for cards and card making projects. So Super fun tutorial today, but fun, fun. Okay, I wanted to show you some samples. So here are some samples of cards that I have done creating patterns in the card. So one of the things that I enjoy with my stamp sets is utilizing my stamp sets to the max. 
So uh, you won't find me adding a lot of pattern paper or doing a lot of different embellishments and things. I like to take the stamps and use them to the max. So use them for everything. So I like to be a stamp and ink girl. So it's kind of fun when you can use your stamps and inks for everything on your card project. So here's an example of how I used stamps and inks to create this pattern background for my card, card project. Love it. Okay, so here's another example. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this today and about my method for creating visually pleasing uh, patterns. Yes, and here's another one. This one's a little bit busy, but still fun. And it's kind of an explosion of florals. Love it. Okay. Oh, love. All right, here's another simple, simple one that uses the same stamp as my backgrounder and creates a really nice piece of patterned paper. You've got all that texture and dimension and it's on one layer. So it's really, really fun. Love it. Okay. So before we dive in, I wanted to talk about one of my secrets to creating patterns and repeats on my card fronts. And that is using line art images these bold and graphic line art images and varying up the colors to create that look and feel. Ah, okay. So let's go ahead and dive in to the first example I want to share and the method that I use to do this. Okay. So this is a really simple card pattern that uses want two stamps, three colors, and we've got this illusion of a lot of texture and a lot of depth to the card, but really all we're doing is layering our stamped images on that card front. So let's dive in and talk about how I would do that. So the stamps I'm going to be using today Let's talk about the supplies first. So the stamps I'm using today, I'm using three stamp sets from my Gina K line. I'm using Hello Beautiful and You Being You and Something Good in Every Day. So I'm going to be using these three stamps from my Gina K Designs line. If you're local to Maryland, you can pick up all of my stamps at Photo Scraps in Sykesville, Maryland. And you know, you could always go to GinaKDesigns.com and shop there for my stamp line. So I'm using those three sets today. And for my paper stock, I'm using Gina K Designs Layering White cardstock. I love this cardstock. It's got a nice, it's nice and smooth. And the inks really, really um, adhere to the paper so, so well. You get bright, bright, vibrant looks and feels. Okay, so the inks that I'm going to be using today, and don't hesitate to ask questions along the way as I talk about, talk through how I build patterns with stamps and inks. So we're only focusing today, I've got a bunch of stamps here, we're only focusing today on building our card backgrounds and patterns with stamps and inks. So this is the big honk and floral from the You Being You set. And I'm going to use this one floral to create this patterned background. Now, the key to creating the layers in the pattern background is how I select the colors as well. So I'm going to work from light to dark. Okay, so from light to dark. So the first color I'm using is sea glass. And then I'm actually going to go to the second color, which would be Lucky Clover. And then I'm going to go to Turquoise Sea and build up these layers of stamped images. So one of the other things that I want to share about choosing your colors for your pattern backgrounds is when you're selecting colors, you kind of pick colors that are either in the same, they're their same temperature. And what I mean by that is, is the color cool 
or is the color warm? So I will show you an example of what I mean. I'm pulling some colors. It looks like I pulled all, here we go. I pulled mostly cool colors because I really like cool colors. Okay, so here is sweet corn, okay? So when I hold sweet corn next to sea glass, I'm, I can definitely get a feeling of what the temperature of this color is. So this is a cooler color and this is a warmer color. So when I'm designing a card and picking out my colors, I kind of stick with all cool colors or all warm colors. And I'm gonna show an example today where I'm gonna cross over a little bit, but that's one, one way that you can pick your colors and really just know that they're going to be complementary to each other and they're gonna work really well together. Okay, so that was some nerdy color chatter. So thank you for bearing with me for you know the nerdiness. So. All right, so let's get started on creating the pattern. And I want to, I'm going to leave this one over here on my left, just so that you can see the logic behind creating my pattern. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Let me just grab a piece of, I'm going to grab a piece of just copy paper so that I'm not wiping down my um, craft mat over and over and over again. All right, so I'm gonna start with the sea glass and I'm going to go ahead and ink up my sea glass in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and ink up my sea glass. I'm using these Comfort Grip blocks from Gina K. I absolutely love these blocks. And like this circle block is just my ultra favorite. So, okay, I'm going to start with the design. Now, when I start with a pattern design, I think about things laying down my stamped image in threes. And I kind of think of how I'm going to position them. I'm always positioning them in threes. So I'm going to start here in this corner. And I've got that one down. And then I'm going to come over here and stamp over here. So I've got one, two. And then I'm going to come over here and stamp my third. So this is very similar to how I would create a pattern for a fabric or for a product. I think about things in threes and how I'm going to position them. So the first layer that I've laid down in the sea glass. I definitely put them off of the edges, so this is the lightest color. And now I'm going to move in with my, my next color. Actually, I'm gonna not do the Lucky Clover, I'm gonna do that last. I'm gonna move in with my Turquoise C. And now I'm going to do that in three. So I've got my stamped image here, my stamped image here and my stamped image here. Now I want to stamp this again in threes. So I'm going to do very similar, except I'm gonna start up here, go here, go he like here and then come down here. So off, come here and then go down here. So I'm thinking about how, so we've got that, oh, got that darker color. I'm gonna stamp this one right here. And then I'm gonna come down here in this corner and stamp right there. So I've got a pattern of color going in threes. Now, it kind of looks a little bit like a hot mess and I kind of need to bring it all together because it really is just kind of looks random. Looks really, really random. So what's going to unify it and bring it all together is taking the Lucky Clover. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp down. I'm gonna again, think about this in threes. So first I started here, one, two, three, from right to left to right again. Then I started up here from left to right to left again. 
Now I'm going to start down here and start filling in some of my spaces. And with the Lucky Clover, I'm going to overlap the images. So when I first did these, I didn't overlap anything. Now we're going to bring that pattern home by starting to overlap our images. So I've got some overlapping here. I'm going to come here. I actually really want to do an overlap here. Really want to pull this part together. And then I'm going to do an overlap right up here. But I kind of brought it down a little bit, which is kind of cool. I like it. So I have some spots here. So the pattern's starting to come together, but it still looks like I have some open spots. I'm always, always thinking about what my open spot is going to be to put my sentiment. So that's why I do that alternating pattern concept. So starting here, then starting there, then doing this, and I know I'm going to have an opening. So I'm going to pop in here and take one of the leaf element stamps. So this isn't another flower, it's more of a filler. So I'm going to take my filler and just strategically place it in places that are going to draw our eye down to the area here where I'm going to put the sentiment. So let's go ahead and ink that up with some of the Lucky Clover. And I'm going to start up here. So one of the things about our clear stamps and stamping that I absolutely adore is that you can really begin to look at your positioning and you can get into the crevice of that spot and really nest your stamped images super super close to each other and it looks like you it looks like your pattern I love it just love that okay this little spot up here is kind of bothering me a little bit but that's okay I'm gonna come in and again I've got this going this way I want to find that little crevice and you see that little crevice right there in the petal I'm gonna go in and really really nest that leaf really close to that petal so I've got that pointing down and now this one oh I almost dropped it. Holy smokes, almost dropped it. Okay. So this one, I'm going to nest right here. So that helps me create that three for my pattern and for my card front. Now, I might take a, another, I might stamp this on another piece of paper and just kind of create an element that I'm going to lift up. But for right now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this pattern the way it is. And here's the really cool thing. So I always, always start my patterns vertically. And then when I finish designing the card, I start to turn it to see if I like the look of the pattern in a different direction. Because in my mind, I think that the pattern looks good this way because I always initially think about starting it this way. But as I'm turning it here, I'm starting to really kind of dig the way it looks this way because I've got that nice open spot here for a really pretty sentiment. So let's go ahead and drop that sentiment in there. Let's drop the beautiful sentiment from the Hello Beautiful stamp set. So let's go ahead and drop that in. Digging it. Oh, happy accident, right? It's a happy accident. So I'm going to drop the beautiful sentiment in there. And I'm just kind of lining it up and nesting it around where that leaf, where the leaves are, actually where the petals are, excuse me. And with all of the color that I have here in my pattern, I always do my sentiments in amalgam. This one is obsidian. So I'm always doing my sentiments 
in black. So because, and I'm going to show you, you don't need to stamp down. Oh, I should have stamped a little bit harder, but that's okay. Where the F-U-L is, <clears throat> that's okay. Okay. So again, I started the pattern this way. And then as I turned it, I discovered that I really, really enjoyed it a lot more this way. And it gave me some room to nest my sentiment. And I actually would have considered bringing that sentiment over a little bit, nesting it right in there where I have the leaves. Ah, love it. Okay. So super simple way to add, take one stamp and then one filler stamp and create a really interesting background that looks like it has a lot of layers going. Love this one. Love this one. Okay, if you guys have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to ask. All right, let's go move on. We're about 22 minutes in, and that's great because I really wanted to get to more than one sample today. So, okay, I am going to talk about this one, this stance. This is a menagerie of open line florals and solid florals from a combination of a couple different stamp sets that I have of mine. So let's go ahead and just kind of pop out all of our little florals that we're going to be using and create something fun here. Let me grab some of the Gina K paper. Now the colors that I'm using for this are very interesting. I have three colors. These are great colors for summer too. So I have lemon drop. I have sweet mango and coral reef. Now all three of these colors are on the cool side, but have like a little bit of warm tones in them. So these two colors have a little bit of a warm tone in them. So here is the sweet mango. Here is the coral reef. And when we match it up with the lemon drop, it kind of brings it all together. So all three of these colors, even though they're considered cool colors, they have a little bit of a warm undertone to them. So one of the things I love is that look at when we layer colors on top of each other. Here's lemon drop and here's sweet mango. You can see how they are, they're transparent, so they're showing through each other. I just love that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the combination of using open line, open line stamps, and silhouette stamps. So, all right, let's go ahead. I'm going to get started with the big silhouette floral from the UB and U stamp set. And I'm going to use the concept of threes that I did before. We're going to start with Lemon Drop. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and ink it up. And I'm going to start on my outer edge. I always, again, I'm starting the card vertically. And we'll see. When you look at this one, works vertically, but look, we could turn it and it could work horizontally as well. Oh, so that's the beauty of this pattern, creating patterns this way. Okay, I'm going to start in this lower corner with my lemon drop and then over here. So one, two, and then come up here and start in my top three. So one, two, three. I didn't show as much there as I wanted to, but that's okay. That's already. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with the silhouette image again, and this time I'm going to use the sweet mango. And I'm going to go ahead in and this time I'm not going to connect them. I want to start somewhere around here 
and then here, so here, 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 and here, here. And I'm using my, my flower. So there's the petal. And I'm going to use the petal and bring this close to the petal. So I'm lining it up right there within that petal shape. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Lining it up. So I'm using these indentations in my petal shape sort of as anchor points for this next part of the pattern. Okay. Let's go ahead in here and find where we're going to nest that one. We're going to nest that right there. So again, we use that little little indentation there. So I've got, again, a pattern of three with the sweet mango. Okay, now I'm going to move on to adding in some of the, I'm going to vary my sizes here. So that's the other thing about our pattern is that we're varying the sizes of our stamped images. So we have sort of a medium size stamp and well, I would say a large stamp and a medium size stamp. Here's a small one. And then my two silhouette stamps were a large and a medium. So we're also varying the sizes of our stamp so that we get a little bit of uh, a little bit of a different look with our design composition. So I'm going to go in first with my large stamp and I'm going to use lemon drop. And now we're starting off with our line art pieces. So I'm going to I'm going to start off down here and then move to here and then there. So I'm always working in these little triangles to create the pattern. All right, I'm gonna start down here and I'm using my shapes in my petals to, to as anchor points to nest the blooms. And that's one way to really get a, create a relationship between the florals and the stamped images. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to use that little shape right there and come in right there with that stamp. Oh, loving it. And then this one, we're gonna just kind of anchor off the edge. So we've got three here with our larger, larger floral. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now I wanna come in and vary the size again with the smaller bloom. And this is like a little cherry blossom. Very cute. And I'm going to start to anchor these pieces as stamps that are going to overlap. So I'm going to ink up with some sweet. Um, yay, Sylvia. Oh, thank you so much. Sylvia, that was so sweet. Thank you. And yes, you can catch us on the catch me on the replay. And you have such a sweet comment. You're a fabulous teacher by making everything make sense. Thank you. That's the whole point of doing these live streams to just kind of break down a technique into small, small chunks so that we can have a better understanding. So thank you, Sylvia. Have a great weekend. Okay. So I've got this piece, this smaller line art floral, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some overlapping. I'm going to do it between here and here. And just kind of let this overlap a little bit. So you notice that I didn't try to intentionally nest that stamp between here. I just let it overlap. And then I'm going to come over here and do some overlapping here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it right there. I'm going to do a little bit of overlapping right there. So I've got one, two. I kind of want to come down here and do the overlapping off the edge but I think I'm gonna do it right here. And I'm gonna overlap here. So what I'm doing is I'm overlapping a line art stamp with a silhouette version of the stamp to create some texture 
and to create some variety in the design. So what it looks like is we have things that we have stamps that are in the background and then we have some images that are in the foreground. So by layering these stamps and creating this pattern, we've got that illusion of dimension without adding all the height to our project. Okay, this one is almost there. Now, what I'm going to do is before I go in, I'm going to come in with this little silhouette stamp. Love this little silhouette. I'm going to use the sweet mango and I'm going to use this little guy as a filler. I'm going to pop it in here. I'm going to pop it like right there as a filler. And I'm going to come up and pop it right there as a filler. So again, in threes, and I'm always trying to make that triangular shape with my stamped images. So it's easy to start to see that triangle shape that I'm building once you get the hang of doing this in threes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close these up so that I don't get my hands in there. And now we're going to go back to add our last layer. So we've been working from light to darks, light and dark colors between our sweet mango and our lemon drop. Now I'm going to come in with the coral reef and I'm going to bring it up, bring this pattern all home by adding another layer, but I'm going to add this flower on and it's going to give us the illusion of that flower being forward and the other flowers being backward in the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink that up and I'm going to figure out what my position is. I'm going to be doing some threes. So I'm going to go here, here, and here. And this is going to overlap. So this is overlapping our silhouette pieces. We can see the silhouette stamp coming through our line art stamp. And it already creates a relationship between all of the, the stamped images that are down here. And it creates a pleasing pattern and texture. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do the same thing. But this is going to be a little bit different. You can see that this cluster right here is more with the line art images. So I'm layering this one big image over top of these line art images. But it still creates a nice pleasing to the eye cluster of flowers. Okay, let's sync it up again. We're going to come up here and we're going to cross over between some of our line art images and our silhouette images. I'm just going to give it a little flip. And I've got that layer happening and crossing over between some silhouette and some line art. And the flowers underneath are popping up through the large flower that we've layered on top. So I'm digging this pattern, loving it. Okay, so again, I created this pattern in a uh, vertical format. But if you did, and I've got some room in here to add a sentiment or even add another layer piece in here to add a sentiment. But you could turn it and decide if you like that and if that's pleasing to the eye. I'm not a big fan of this one right here. This one could work because it's very similar to the vertical direction of the other way. And this, I'm not really digging the way this looks horizontally right now because this flower, I really just kind of want to turn it a little bit to the left. It feels a little awkward to me. So that's okay. I am digging the way this pattern has come out. So here was the, the one I kind of noodled around. And then here is the pattern that we created with that. So loving it. Okay. So I would say we've migrated up from a simple pattern design to migrating up to one that's a little bit more complex using, using just a few stamps. Now, let's see, how are we doing on time? We got 35 minutes in. Let's consider moving to talking about a more complex pattern. So 
I'm going to talk about this pattern instead of stamping it out. So this is more of a complex stamped out pattern. It's got quite a few things going on. It's got all of these different flowers that help unite the pattern in open line and silhouette images. It's got some filler pieces in it to help unite the design in color as well. And it also has a big, bold graphic element that is basically on the base layer. Even though this is one layer, you can see that graphical element, that nice little rectangular graphical element, prism-like, in the background. So this is more of a complex pattern with our stamps, and there are several stamps in this pattern. So, but again, designing this in threes is exactly what I did for this pattern. So I've got that big honkin stamp. This is the stamp that I used and I stamped it three times. One, two, three. And now my colors that I used for this one is what I was talking about in the beginning, how I crossed over into a cool color, cooled it skews a little bit warm and definitely a warmer color. So my cool color key line, my warm color, cool, I call this a cool warm, wild dandelion, I love this yellow, oh, and sweet corn is definitely a little bit more of a warmer yellow. So I started my base with the warmer yellow and started it with the sweet corn. So I took that, uh, that stamp, took that big rectangular kind of graphic stamp and one, two, three, and then went in following that pattern with the larger, here's that stamp right here, let me pull that, a larger silhouette flower and stamped it in the wild dandelion. So I'm following it up with my yellow. So yellow, yellow, yellow. And then I started to go in with varying up my sizes of my other flowers. So back to sweet corn with a medium sized flower here, here, and here, which is different. I didn't do a triangle that time. I just, I've got a lot of triangle, triangular things going on here. I just went one, two, three. And then I grabbed my smaller open line flower in wild dandelion and went one, two, three, and did the triangle again. Then coming in with the key line, I added the silhouette flower that is the same size as the line art flower, but it's a silhouette, so it's going to give us a little bit more density of color here. So I went one, two, three, create that triangular look. And then I had a pretty, pretty dense pattern, but I wanted to add some filler to help bring that green, that key lime color, to cool this whole design off because we've got some warm look and feel. And I grabbed some of the filler stamps, which some of the leaves and greenery, and anchored that stamp on to the rectangular bold graphical stamp. So it's anchored here, anchored here, and anchored here, again in a three. And then grabbed my little splatter and just kind of popped the splatter in, in the other alternate three. So one, two, three, then one, two, three. And then we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's always an order of threes with building the pattern on the card front. So oh, I just got a little excited and a little bit geeky. Love, love, love. Okay. So super fun patterns that we created today. Love it. All these different patterns that we created today, just using our stamped images. Now you could sit down and create a bunch of pattern card fronts and just have them waiting in the wings for when you're ready to make your cards. You can also die cut these pieces out and just have some fun with them. So love it. Okay. I hope you have a really great weekend and hope you get some time to craft your joy, get out all your supplies and have some fun.
And if you have any questions on the replay, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a great weekend.